Okay, let's uh, let's pray. And Father, we, we thank you for this day, Lord. We thank you for giving us yet another opportunity to come uh, to your presence, Father God, from various places. So God, we've drawn near, Lord, to, um, to seek you, to seek your will, to seek your purposes uh, for us, Lord. Um, we thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence, Lord. We thank you for um, your anointing that breaks every yoke, that makes... Um, Lord, everything possible, Lord, whatever you've instructed in your word, Lord, um, we thank you that uh, the empowering of your spirit uh, is enough for us to walk in that master. We thank you for the empowering of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for your anointing, Lord, that enables us, Lord, to put to death the deeds of the body. Lord, we thank you for this um, verse that we read just now, that when we walk in the spirit, as prompted, as led, uh, Lord, as uh, as guided by you, by your spirit, Lord, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. And it could be in any scenario, God, we thank you that it, whether it's work or family, marriage, Lord, in all these environments, God, in all these uh, different scenarios, God, um, when we are led by you, Lord, when we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Uh, we thank you for this uh, declaration of victory, Father God. And so we choose to agree, God. We accept, we receive your word this morning. And we uh, we agree with you, acknowledge that this is the truth, God. Because you have spoken it, you have declared it. And so we declare it over our lives, God, that we will walk in the spirit that we will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, oh God. And uh, yeah, uh, we just... Lord, bring all areas of our lives, Lord, uh, and we submit under the Lordship, Lord, under your submission, God. Um, and we, we we pray and we ask this morning that you will continue to lead us, God, even as we uh, follow you, even as we obey, Lord, and and uh, even as we Lord, put to death the th deeds of the body. We thank you, Master. We thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. Uh, we give you all the glory at this time. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Okay. Um, so today, um, you know, before we just step in, um, just wanted to, sorry. Yeah, I just wanted to um, just uh, quickly talk about, uh, you know, what we saw last class. Um, we we uh, looked at uh, how um, the husband and wife are a team. Right, and we looked at the dynamics of the team, and uh, and how that would really help uh, help in a in a marriage relationship, uh, help strengthen the marriage relationship, help uh, uh, help everything that the couple does together um, to really prosper. Right, to dwell with understanding, uh, you know, spiritually. Uh, prayers and uh, our spiritual walk with the Lord, everything is enhanced. Everything changes when we begin to work or walk together as a as a team, right? And we looked at some of the hindrances, um, what uh, what really uh, keeps us from becoming uh, um, becoming a good team. Right? And we also looked at something which is um, much bigger um, in terms of purpose, in terms of um, you know, our walk with the Lord, the fact that um, the Lord, yes, he calls us individually, but he also calls us as as couples, right? as uh, husband and wife together um, to serve kingdom purposes. And, uh, and that's a beautiful thing, right? That the Lord uh, invites husband and wives as, as a couple to serve uh, his kingdom, to build his kingdom. And, uh, and, that's, uh, and that's a beautiful thing, you know? Uh, so, um, once the couple understands, okay, God, you know, this is where this is one area that you've called us. This is one uh, thing that we can do together. So there's so much, so much synergy. There's so much of sharing of strength. There's so much of covering up or you know, um, uh, overcoming of weaknesses uh, because one is strong in in the very area that the other one is not so strong. Maybe so. Um, so we see all that. And also looked at some of the practical things, you know, that uh, when you are pursuing kingdom purposes, uh, that we all always need to um, support one another, encourage one another. And also we looked at, you know, some very practical things like, um, 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 just one second, sorry. Um, yeah. So very practical things like um, when it comes to 
people right so ministry is about people and especially if uh, we are going to be uh, in a church kind of a ministry uh, or any other kind of ministry you know it, it, we are going to be interacting with people so we do not need to live for people's approvals and expectations right um, you know and and we say this in a good way in the sense um well uh, you know uh, there could be constructive criticism there could be uh, you know certain expectations which are which go with the role that is fine but then you know we don't have to live for the approval we don't have to impress people right and uh, live uh, to always uh, fulfill the expectations especially when you know that okay this is what traditionally the role calls for right uh, and we saw how uh, you know typically a pastor's wife is supposed to be serving in these areas the pastor's kids are supposed to be doing this and and all that you know the pastor's uh, son or the daughter needs to continue with the ministry and those kind of expectations which are more cultural and traditional rather than uh the truth itself you know, truth of god's word so uh, so we can you know we can very uh, uh lovingly and also in a firm manner you know explain to people and also be faithful to uh, serve god and uh, in in the very area that you've yeah, that he's called right so uh we don't have to cave into the, that kind of uh pressure okay and also when it comes to nurturing children we see that uh, well uh, that responsibility is uh, for the couple as husband and wife and as mother and father and uh, so we don't have to relegate we should not relegate that responsibility to anyone else right okay uh, of course um, others in the extended family can definitely or be you know gin and help and you know because there are so much of uh, uh, packed schedules and you know different things to be done but then the onus the responsibility is on us to raise them up and and being a husband and wife team uh, definitely helps right definitely um, helps uh, uh, live or parent in an effective manner okay okay so today uh, we're going to look at uh, one more interesting uh, aspect of uh, marriage which is um, you know which is something that um, uh, you know which that husband and wife needs to be skilled at uh, and uh, having skills in this area definitely would help sort out a lot of problems right so this is in the area of conflicts or um, resolving conflicts okay so uh, when it comes to marriage, when it comes to uh, you know the ideal marriage, well, one would say, okay, uh, we we do not want to have any fights, we don't want to have any arguments, we don't want to have you know any disagreements, uh, and and that's the you know that's a dream of every couple. I think when they are you know when they are at the altar and then they are say, you know exchanging their vows, it's a it's a beautiful setting, uh, it's wonderful, and uh, you know it's a happy occasion, and and that's that is what the um, uh i'm sure that's that's what they, they're wishing for you know but that uh, is not reality right the conflicts are bound to happen okay conflict can be a disagreement conflict can be um just a different way of looking at things and uh, it, it can be as sharp as a argument or it can be a uh, you know it can be something uh, uh, more intense than that also it can be a quarrel it can be a fight whatever um but the thing is um, to have an expectation that um uh, that it's going to be completely zero conflict is not a realistic expectation okay and um, and why you know the 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 reason is that uh, the primary reason is that as um as a couple the husband and the wife are different in so many ways okay so even the the husband and wife who's who are like you know whom you can just say that they are so similar they are the similar likes and similar you know uh dislikes and they like the same thing and all that even those couples have um differences Okay, they are built differently, wired differently. They have differences. Okay, so there's no doubt about that. So, um, so we're just going to look at some of these differences um, in in what realms we have these differences, so that uh, 
you know, it doesn't take us by surprise. Right? Let me just share that screen. Um, Okay, so many times what happens is, uh, you know, when when there's a conflict, uh, uh, people uh, or the couple just um, comes to the understand comes comes to the maybe uh, kind of a conclusion that yeah, this is the end of it. You know, this is it. We've had a conflict, we had a fight, and uh, uh, this is like a black mark in our you know spotless record. And so, uh, wow, this is it. This is the end of it. Um, you know, uh, uh, we can't proceed beyond that. You know, uh, so uh, that that is uh, that is not true. Okay. So the thing is that conflicts are bound to happen. Okay. Uh, it's just that we need to know how to handle them. Okay. And it happens because we are different. Okay. Let's see. What are the areas um, in which, um, as a husband and wife, or, or as men and women, you know, um, uh, as, as a gender itself, we are different, right? So, as men and women, there are differences. One, of course, the most obvious one is in terms of anatomy. Right, uh, physical anatomy. There is difference. Um, physiologically, also there are differences. When we say physiologically, we are saying okay in terms of uh, in terms of strength, in terms of uh, you know, um, in terms of thinking, in terms of uh, you know, more mainly the physical attributes. Um, well, men are different. Men are stronger uh, in most cases uh, than women, and then. Uh, well, science also has proved that women have four times, apparently, more neurons or brain cells than um, connecting, you know, the left and the right um, uh, half of the brain or the hemispheres of the brain than men. So the way they think is different. The way they decide certain things is different. Uh, the way they make choices, it's it's different. So there are uh, so physiological physiological differences. Now these physiological differences, now they influence the way men and women affect or, or influ I mean, sorry, it in influences how they approach a problem. Okay, how they're going to approach a problem? How they think and make decisions, uh, the kind of capacity for remembering, um, you know, data, remembering uh, dates and remembering, you know, all those things, and remembering information, uh, recalling information, everything is, uh, is different. And so that influences or that definitely has an impact in the way, uh, in, the, in, in, in the relationship. Right, so we need to. Uh, it's a given, right? It's it's. Uh, this is what this is what happens. So um, there's no uh, avoiding this. You know, this is how it is. So uh, when it comes to let's say, um, uh, just a minute, please. Yeah. Uh, then the third uh, uh, third area, sorry, is is psychological. Okay. So and anatomical then physiological then psychological so when it comes to psychological you know the, the way problems uh, are solved the way um, thinking itself uh, thinking pattern memory etc so let's say for example if you're looking at uh, you know problem solving uh, normally they say that uh, um, you know for women uh, the process of how it is solved is uh, is very very important okay? um, so it's a it's an opportunity to share, to discuss, uh, to interact. Uh, the relationship is strengthened, and uh, you know all that happens. Okay, and um, you know recently we had a uh, we had a project uh, you know presentation, different groups, and uh, and um, you know my, my wife was in a in a different group, and it was primarily uh, you know all the ladies were there in that group, and. Well, they would meet very often. They would uh, discuss, and uh, you know, late night calls, and uh, and all that was happening. A lot of chatter, a lot of things, and they, they really enjoyed that whole thing. And I was just comparing that with some of the you know the all guys groups, which uh, which which also met, but it was uh, mainly focused on on the you know task at hand. Uh, well, all the other things were just a outflow of that. 
or uh, outflow of uh, the group meeting together but um, but it was like okay let's let's solve it let's get it done and then let's move on you know we just don't want to hang around and do these things and uh, yeah so it, it it is like that so when it, even when it comes to problem solving um uh, it's uh, it, it's the approach is different and uh, the way they do it the way the man does the way the woman does is different okay so now that's going to so those are that's a difference and then when it comes to thinking itself something as basic as thinking processing information you know um so when it comes to women the the you know the the um, psychological aspect uh, with people who have studied you know uh, human behavior they say that women are very very intuitive um they are they they consider multiple sources of information uh, not just go with one thing um uh, and before making their choice and there's so much of uh, like connectedness okay in making decisions right um in fact i think the next slide kind of uh, you know explains that um let me just yeah um okay so it says men are like waffles in the sense you know if uh, if you see waffles waffles are like like this right it's a block and it has these kind of um you know impressions there so men are like waffles in the sense so compartmentalized okay so you, so you think about one thing i'm not going to think about i'm not going to let the other thing affect it like to a to a large extent whereas for women uh, you know people say that women are like spaghetti in the sense like a, like noodles uh, or you know spaghetti so everything is connected okay everything is interconnected it's not compartmentalized the way what happened in the morning what happened uh, the, the conversation that happened over breakfast the you know everything is is connected so ultimately when it comes to that interaction and or a problem you know everything bear, has a bearing uh, on it right so it's so interconnected it's um, it's not boxed like um, like men's thinking so women think differently so that also has a bearing on the relationship when it comes to conflicts okay okay when it comes to memory well um women have a, do have a edge in the sense they are able to recall okay like for example i'm i'm talking to my wife and then um, you know she says things like okay on that day this person wore that um or she's able to recall a you know particular uh, i don't know some birthday or wedding anniversary and then uh, she's talking about okay i this person wore that or i wore that and and uh, and it just beats me because i have no idea what i wore on that day i have no idea what that other person wore on that day so my memory is completely okay uh, you know i think i wore something formal or casual maybe it, it's that's the you know that's the depth it can go to um and i'm sure there could be exceptions you know i'm, I'm sure there could be men who have you know uh, a great memory and also but then by and large this is how it is so they're able to bring back when it comes to remembering details okay about something that happened they're able to remember things restructure the events okay this is what happened you said this i said this you said this all details are there and the man is like blank okay <laughs> i would, maybe even the you know the the the, the uh, sequence of it is sometimes you know forgotten so uh, so that so this is what happened right um uh so that's that's a big difference right okay um so you can imagine right uh, when it comes to these kind of things okay sensitivity okay, let's look at sensitivity so women uh, more sensitive more caring uh, and i think it is more to do with um, of course people also uh, have found out that it's, it's more to do with uh, the fact that they are uh you know they they are naturally wired and designed for um for nurture for care to to be a mother um to the child and and so on so um again they it's it's a it's a gen uh, we can't really 
completely generalize there could be exceptions but women are more caring more sensitive right um well men uh how are relationships uh, uh with others you know when they have shared activities when they do stuff together and uh, it could be uh, you know a physical uh, more like a physical thing maybe like a game or something uh, or sport and uh, you know and that's how they connect with people and maybe over a you know even uh, watching a game you know like cricket or football or whatever um, and there are a lot of uh, sharing uh, uh, things that happens uh, sharing of information we're discussing certain things like politics or, uh, or you know something like that so um so this men connect over those things okay uh, so it, it's it could be things like uh, you know sharing of information sharing of, so not necessarily maybe uh, naturally compassionate again there could be uh, differences but the, the thing is this so we have all these differences okay between just the genders between the man and the woman so so in a marriage one needs to be able to understand recognize that there are these differences so it's it's uh it's it, 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 we cannot um, you know expect the wife to think the same way as you know a, a, as the husband is thinking to uh, approach a problem the same way the husband is approaching to solve some things the same way the husband is doing right so both will be different okay so we need to kind of recognize that okay okay well, this is how this person does it um well some could be just on the spur of the moment right spur of the moment decisions uh spur of the moment uh, some choices right very impulsive sometimes uh well well, well the other person is very rational you know, I'm talking about, you know, it could be either the husband or the wife, very rational, a uh, lot of research, uh, maybe time taken uh, to go through these things. Yes, no, you know, pros and cons and comes to it. So for that, for that kind of a person, uh, an impulsive, you know, if the, if the other, if the spouse is very impulsive and this is how they decide, it puts a lot of pressure. You know, let's go there. No, we need time. One person likes surprises. Wow, let's do it. Let's go there. Fine, fantastic. Oh, we need to do it. W wonderful. Uh, people suddenly show up. Oh, wow. So I I'm so surprised. Uh, and then and then we like, just enjoy the surprise. But for the other person, they don't. They can't handle that. They can't ha handle impulsive things. They can't handle surprises. Oh no, I need some time. Oh, I'm not dressed for the occasion. I'm not, uh, you know, mentally prepared. I need some time to just process these things. So it puts them under pressure. Whereas the other thing, other person is like, you know, kind of bored, They're saying like, come on, let's, where's your sense of adventure? And there itself, you know, that because the difference is there could be uh, a conflict, right? So, um, so the thing is to recognize that there are differences, to acknowledge that there are differences. And these are, these are uniqueness, you know, these are, these are unique to every person, right? And these are unique typically to the gender itself, right? So. So recognize, understand, and and also uh, some things that uh, that is not to be done is not to criticize, and uh, because of these things, not to criticize. Well, um, so to learn to respect, to learn to love, to learn to serve um, with these you know differences, right? Um, that doesn't mean that okay, if 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 it is hurting or if it is being ineffective. Okay, certain things are being ineffective. Let's say uh, one person is forever cleaning, arranging. The other person is just making a mess. Okay, the other person is just not able to, you know, put things together or not uh, unable to, and also not, you know, putting things in place. Obviously, the house is going to look a mess. Right, it's going to be very messy, and uh, things are not in their place, and uh, going to find, uh, you know, great difficulty in finding one simple thing. Okay, where are the keys? You don't know. Where did you keep them? I don't know. <laughs> right? And uh, so how do we lock the house now? We need to leave. So they are spending a lot of time just searching for the house keys so that they can lock. So so there, th those are things that 
uh, one needs to avoid, you know, irrespective of whether it's impulsive or creative or inspirational and, you know, all those characteristics. Um, well, here's something that needs to be sorted. Okay. So, um, so when it comes to those kind of things, of course, you know, we need to love, respect, and in a in a in an atmosphere of love and mutual respect, decide the course of action. Saying, okay, this is something. This is the place for the keys. <laughs> this is the place for the clothes. Okay. Now, within this, you you do what you want, right? If this is the place for the clothes, and this is your space for the clothes. In the in this space, how you want it is entirely up to you. <laughs> but the suggestion is that if you want to find it, you'll find it easier if it is kept in this way, right? So, uh, so that's the thing. No, so you don't have to criticize the person and say you are always messy or you are always disorganized. Um, and we can help. Right? Because if we make those those kind of statements, we are actually putting down our spouse. Or the other person is saying, you are always too rigid. You are inflexible. You're always doing this. Have, you know, loosen up. Have some fun. You're always like this. Why are you like this? Uh, you know, you're so obsessively organized. Or so, you know, it's like an compulsive behavior. So when we, when we attack each other, uh, it's not going to solve anything. Right? But when we recognize that, okay, this person is uh, even for a simple decision, it's going to take some time. Okay, fine. But, um, you know, if it's going to affect the working of home, the operation of the house and, and other decisions, then we need to talk and, and find a way out okay? uh, without putting down the person, right? And we can talk about the behavior. We can talk about, um, you know, these, uh, um, these traits without putting down the person, without attacking the character. Right, so that can always be done. Okay, um, you know we go back to that scripture, First Peter three and verse seven. Okay, First Peter three, we've we've gone back to it uh, several times. Um, so let's let's go back to that. First Peter three and verse seven, which says, "Husbands likewise, dwell with them." Talking about the wife with understanding. Okay. giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. So, so we, we, we understand several things. Okay, first thing, foremost thing is the instruction itself, right? Dwell with understanding. But going beyond that, we see that there is a need for dwelling with understanding. Why? Um, you know, it says that giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. So there are, you know, the, there is that physiological difference there. And there could be, you know, n number of other differences. So the need to dwell with understanding. And this applies to, um, you know, the, both, the, both of them, the husband and the wife, to dwell with understanding, right? And primarily, um, the instruction is for the husband. And also other instructions that we see in the in the next chapter, um, so it uh, uh, or uh, sorry when we go to um uh and when we go to Ephesians and we look at um, Ephesians 5 we see the other uh, other aspect uh, or the instruction for the wife right for the uh, for the uh, for the wife to dwell with the husband uh, to be submissive and uh, you know to love and to cherish the for the instruction for the husband um, and to give oneself love as Christ loved the church and to give oneself um, to the wife and um, for the uh, wife to respect, for the wife to be submissive um, and so on. So we see that um, you know these instructions are there, um, which means that uh, there is a need to understand the difference, there is a need to acknowledge that, yeah, there is a uh, these all differences are there, but we're going beyond that. Now, we're not saying okay, um, people will be perfect, and therefore I can, I can do this. No, people will not be perfect. There will be differences, and, uh, and despite that, right, we we uh, we we acknowledge that. These are the differences, and we go beyond that. Okay, so um, when conflicts arise, 
uh, and why do conflicts arise first of all it's because of these differences but conflicts can also be because of other factors okay other external factors like one um, uh, but the thing is this when the husband and wife are not prepared and the husband and wife are not living according to God's design of marriage right? um, when there is no understanding of God's uh, design of marriage well there will be constant conflicts why because this is the design this is how God designed it and we're not going as per the design okay like for example if uh, you know either the husband or the wife's parents uh, are going to be constantly interfering, constantly directing, uh, constantly making decisions on behalf of the husband and wife. Right? Now, there will be conflict. There's bound to be conflict. Right? Because, uh, well, the Bible is very clear. It says, okay, this is for this reason shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave. Right? So, so that leaving is, uh, is not abandoning. We looked at that. This leaving is not disrespect uh, to the, you know, it's a lack of honor. It's nothing there of that sort. But then there is a separation in the sense that here now, the husband and wife are a separate entity. So they're going to be making choices for them, themselves as husband and wife, and for them as family. There can be, you know, good advice, or maybe there is some good counsel coming from either. Uh, you know, parents, which is fine. Then ultimately, the decision, uh, the direction is taken as a, you know, in, in a in a consultative manner by the husband and the wife. So, uh, so when there's you know interference, obviously there will be conflict. There could be uh, conflicts because of financial things. The way the husband handles the finances, um, the way the wife handles it. Maybe it has to do with spending, it has to do with saving, right? If there are differences and uh, one doesn't understand why this person is living that way, or if there are, uh, you know, if there are, if those financial decisions hurt the family, right? Uh, maybe there's uh, extravagant living and uh, not enough, uh, you know, not proper stewardship of finances, and there's, and there's lack because of that. There's constant tension because of that. Well, uh, there will be a conflict, okay? Uh, and if there are other behavior patterns, right? Uh, behavior patterns like uh, maybe some addictions, uh, behavior uh, patterns which, uh, which you know, without proper boundaries for relationships, you know, uh, people of uh, other gender, uh, it could be without proper boundaries uh, well-defined boundaries in relationships then again there is a conflict okay and when either the husband or the wife constantly and uh, consistently if they neglect their responsibilities they're going to be saying okay um, not living up to the promise not uh, not taking uh, you know taking responsibility for their behavior or taking care of uh, some of the things that they need to do, okay, um, consistently saying, okay, I'm not going to do anything, uh, and we see, you know, some, uh, it's it's very sad, but we see some of the, you know, people who help in the, in people's homes, we constantly, you know, hear this, you know, that uh, the husband is uh, drinking and uh, uh, just, uh, you know, just sitting at home, not doing anything, and um, um, and the wife is going and helping in you know different homes. She's taking care. Somehow, get putting all this money together, and paying for the fees, children's fees, and paying for the rent, and taking care of the expenses of the running, the expenses of the house, and and you see that there is constant. Uh, turmoil, you know, the atmosphere in the house is one of conflict and, um, you know, hurt and um, uh, and, and always uh, and there's some kind of verbal abuse and domestic violence and all that happens, right? So we see that um, these kind of things, like, so even in a Christian home, even when we say that, okay, the husband and wife are believers, if uh, both of them don't share the Lord, or don't take care of the responsibilities as they should. Uh, 
than there is, uh, but there is bound to be conflict. Okay, so when when there's um, okay, let me just uh, see what else. Um, yeah, um, so when there's a, when there's a conflict, there's a, you know there's argument. There is a, uh, maybe you know people are being uh, there's argument uh, arguments, and then you um, you say hurtful things. There's uh, uh, heightened emotions of anger, and uh, and because of which, you know, you say things, you do things, uh, and then you offend the person, hurt the person. Right? And anger is is something that uh, that is a probably you know that is the first outcome of a conflict, right? So yeah, so the question is this: Is anger good or bad? You know, anger as an emotion. Yeah. So, what do you think? Is anger good? Is it bad? Um, probably you can put it in the chat because, um, like, we need to understand, right? If uh, yeah, I mean, you, you okay, Jeff? And sometimes it's good. Maybe, if you know. <laughs> Sometimes maybe and uh, okay. So any other any other responses? Like, uh, what do you think when it comes to anger? You can just unmute and talk also. Um, why does a person, uh, you know, feel anger in the first place? So anger, right? Anger. Any anyone? Why does a person get angry? Why do you get angry? And since Jeffina put the thing, I'll just ask Jeffina. Like, why do you get angry, Jeffina? Uh, maybe when the other person uh, does something that I don't like, okay. or sometimes uh, when he doesn't do the right thing, I might get angry. Mm. Um, Maybe when you get angry, people listen. <laughs> so. Oh, okay. So when you when you respond in anger, then people listen. Okay, you're just shouting and then they listen rather than oh. kind words. <laughs> like uh, if you saying. kept saying something for uh. a long time and they are not listening, and some one day if you just raise your voice a little bit, mm. maybe again. Mm. And then they behave themselves. Okay, uh, okay. John, John, John says um, anger is a human emotion. Okay, so Bible says be angry, and in your anger do not sin. Right? Be angry, but sin not. Uh, we see that in Ephesians four, right? Um, okay. Um, Paul says it is emotional reaction that you may not control. Okay, okay. So yeah, so so the thing is this: that anger is a human emotion, like John rightly said uh, it's an emotional reaction sometimes it's a you know i think reaction is a is a good word because uh, it just seems to you know it's not a response planned response but it's just a you know outburst um, you just react to a situation and it happens um, and um, well so so to 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 say that anger and and like jafina said okay it's good sometimes in the sense we get angry because there's some sense of injustice, right? Some sense of injustice in the sense, uh, hey, I'm I'm meant to go there. Somebody cuts, you know, in. You know, you're in a queue, and you're the next at the counter, and uh, you've been standing in the queue for about ten minutes or so, and you're about to go and get your ticket or whatever, and then somebody cuts in, and you get angry. Now. Uh, it's a, it, it just indicates that you are not um, you don't like that sense of injustice okay? and and rightly so right uh, it means that uh, you are aware that it is a sense of it is there's injustice being done and uh, you know you know you have that sense of right and wrong okay? you're not passive uh, you're not unemotional you're just not cold but you know you are you're alive to these things right um and if if someone is uh, you know there's injustice some someone is treated poorly 
someone is uh, abused um, maybe there's physical abuse and and you 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 get stirred up and there is a sense of anger you know that needs to stop i need to do something about it i need to you know so it's anger is good but the the thing is this you know when when we react in anger okay, so anger is an emotion all of us feel as human beings we feel anger but then when we react out of anger and uh, what we do with anger in anger now that is what makes it you know either good or bad in the sense the outcome of it right so when we um, in, in the sense it's like this when we when we feel anger and we say words because we are stirred up uh, and we are angry and there's no control of it right we would have used other words in a in a different you know for the for addressing this uh, you know maybe we could have used you know wholesome good kind words to get the job done but then because we are angry we use hurtful words right and these words go like bullets or arrows and we um, are tearing down the person and hitting the you know character of the person so um, so when we use when we re react in anger then it creates a problem right? so anger needs to be managed well right? um, anger needs to be managed well or it needs to be channeled properly it needs to be controlled right and uh, and that verse that we saw um, uh, which uh, john is referring to uh, in Ephesians, um let me just um, go to that verse Ephesians 4 right um and verse 26 be angry and do not sin do not let the sun go down on your wrath nor give place to the devil. So it has a spiritual repercussion in the sense, uh, I, you know, in my anger, if I say something, do something, and sin. Now that's a possibility. If I'm continuing to be in anger, you know, anger mode, um, then you know I'm opening the door for the enemy to. I'm giving a place for the enemy. So, um, so it's very clear. Don't give a foothold. You know that that place is. Uh, uh, you know, that word used there, non good places, is a dwelling place. Uh, well, it's, it's, it could be as small small as a foothold, right? So you're giving a dwelling place for the enemy. You're opening the door for the enemy. So uh, if it's continuing, you know, if you're going to have a sustained uh, period of this anger. So that's the thing. So anger, it is a good emotion, but we need to do it. Uh, or we need to respond in the right way with anger. So it just it alerts us to something that is not right. It alerts us to something that is uh, you know uh, that you are being wronged, or uh, and and that also we need to be careful. You know, is it out of a selfish thing? You know, um, motive, or is it uh, is it otherwise? Okay. So anger must be dealt with in the right manner. We you know any notes? There are several. Uh, scriptures that talk about uh, the negative impact of anger. Right? It talks about um, when we are always angry, we do some things which are not wise, foolish things. Uh, anger causes arguments, whereas when we are patient, it brings about peace. Um, when we have a quick temper, when we are quick to get angry, causes a lot of strife, a lot of quarreling, quarreling, a lot of trouble. Okay, so if you are if you are quick tempered, you know if you're not if you are quick to get angry, then in the relationship, there's going to be a lot of quarrels and a lot of strife. Because you're quick to get angry, and in your anger, you're saying certain things. And it creates a very, a very, very um, negative atmosphere in the home. Right? It affects the, um, you know, the, the relationship with the husband and wife. And also, you know, when there are children, uh, it affects them. They are constantly, you know, we don't realize it, but those constant arguments and those constant um, uh, exchange and anger, uh, exchange of angry words and uh, anger emotion, it, it affects the children as well, right? Uh, so that's the sad part of it, okay? Um, so James 1, 19 and 20 uh, says, uh, everyone, you know, we should be quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. 
right? Quick to listen, slow to speak, slow to anger. And uh, also that verse, uh, verse 20 talks about how the anger of man does not fulfill the purpose of God, right? So, so this is the, you know, uh, the outcome of anger. Okay. Okay. We'll stop here. We'll take a break and then uh, we will get back.